and welcome to the back brief i'm rod rodriguez your host uh and today i'm rocking another jujitsu shirt 2015 worlds what's up uh those of you out in there know will know you know what that means uh and it's it's a crazy week another crazy week in veteran news um Another body found in Fort Hood. It's good to know that Fort Hood's keeping it real. Jesus Christ. There is no, there's no clean. There's nothing clean about Colleen, folks. Nothing clean about Colleen. They put the kill back in Colleen. I could do this all day. I could do that all day. But I don't want to bore you, and I certainly don't want to bore our guest of the week. That is none other than the amazing, the unflappable. Insufferable. Insufferable. Jack Murphy. Jack, how are you, bud? I'm good. I'm good. Staying busy. That's right, man. Staying busy, getting swole at the house. I think every <laughs> dude right now is in this corona uh, apocalypse. We're all at the house. We're all trying to do our best. And I, I think we're all like trying to come out of this thing like bodybuilders. Like we want to come out of the corona lockdown as if we had been doing a nickel and Chino, you know, like we, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do a prison PT at home. Oh yeah. Getting People the, out there the lifting bar. lamps. <laughs> Kettlebells. Lifting, yeah. Kettlebells lifting furniture, grabbing their dog, just doing curls with a fucking German shepherd. Um, but that is, that is the life we live. That is the, uh, the existence many veterans are finding themselves in. But um, I, I kind of touched on, I, I go went ahead. and got a uh, a heavy bag off of uh, Facebook. What is it? Marketplace? Or it's like it's like Facebook, eBay. Got yeah, a heavy it's bag and a it's stand. It's Craigslist. Yeah. It's it's like it's it's like Craigslist with less fear of murder. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> that's less fear. I'm gonna get molested. Yeah, I, I I feel like if you have a Facebook account, I might feel I might be safer. Like I'm gonna visit your thing. Like oh, he has kids. He's fine. I like never thinking, oh, maybe those are fake pictures and those that whole family's dead in this basement. But sure, I'll go pick up that Xbox for $200. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? So, Jack, I, I kind of touched on uh, Fort Hood, murders, not good in any way, shape, or form. But uh, what else do you got for this week, man? Well, yeah, a bunch of things. Um, one thing I've been following up on is some of the developments involving uh, Michael Taylor who is a veteran, he is a retired Green Beret, and he stands accused of being the gentleman who smuggled Nissan chairman Carlos Gossin out of Japan, uh, where he was out on bail pending you know, a court case, smuggling him out uh, allegedly in a, in a black music case with uh, air holes drilled into it, put onto a privately chartered flight, flown to Istanbul, and then onto his home in Lebanon. So, Michael Taylor is accused of, uh, of being the mastermind behind that, I guess you could say. Uh, in my conversations with him, he's declined to make any sort of on the comment or on the record comments about it, um, which I think you'll be able to understand why, um, because he has been charged uh, in Japan. Well, no, let, let me even back it up because it's even more complicated and stranger than that. So the Japanese allege that he did this, right? Um, they, uh, the, the Japanese government has an extradition treaty with the United States and South Korea, only two countries in the world, a lot largely because the Japanese have a conviction rate of like 99.7%. So a lot of countries are not so confident in their justice system. Uh, but in order to honor our extradition treaty, the Department of Justice moved in, they arrested Michael Taylor and his son, Peter. Uh, and they have been in federal lockup for the last nine weeks. Um, the first hearing, the judge refused to let them out on bail, saying they were a flight risk. Um, they're having their second hearing coming up on the 28th, where the judge is going to address the motion uh, for to be released on bail and motion to just dismiss, just squash the case entirely, which is a possibility. Right. Now, here's here's the really interesting thing um, that's wait, happening. Wait, wait, wait. There's something more interesting than the fact this dude tried to smuggle a millionaire out of Japan. Yes. Here, here's the, here's what's interesting is that what he's alleged to have done is not illegal under Japanese law. So section. Wait, wait, wait. So wait, what? So he was a, he, he he tried to smuggle a dude out of Japan in an instrument case with holes. Drill. We'll get to that. But it's not illegal in Japan. Like this is, it's cool. Right. So under section, 
uh, 103 of Japanese law, it says it is illegal to harbor a fugitive who is being pursued by the police. It says that it is illegal to assist someone in a prison break, like to break out of a detention facility. That's illegal. Now, Carlos Kassan was on uh, out on bail. Um, it, he was in his home, but he was out on bail pending uh, legal action. Uh, a lot of it had to do with uh, the merger he was bro he was brokering with uh, Renault, the French car company. That's a whole. That's almost like an entire other story in of itself. So he was out on house arrest when he was smuggled out of Japan. Um, so section 103 of Japanese law. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're good. Um, so section 103 of Japanese law was not broken, um, by smuggling him out because he was out on bail. He's he essentially helping someone to skip out on bail is not illegal under Japanese law. So now you have the United States honoring the extradition treaty. Mike Taylor and his son have been locked up for the last nine weeks. Uh, however, when the department of justice has been asked and even the judge is, is asking like, Hey, where's the charge sheet on this guy? Has he been indicted? Where, I mean, what, where, what is he being charged with? And they don't have anything. He hasn't been charged with a crime because what he did in Japan is not illegal. So is this one of those situations where a bunch of Japanese attorneys and, and lawmakers are sitting around going, how the f did we not make this illegal? Like they're, they're sitting around trying to change the law right now. But it won't affect this guy. I mean, it's not like they can just make new I, laws and be like, oh, now you're guilty of that. I honestly, I don't know the answer to that question. I, and I need to speak to some lawyers and some legal experts to find out if <laughs> a law can be applied retroactively like that in Japan. I, I honestly don't know. So who is this guy? I mean, so why why, why does this matter to veterans? Uh, I assume he's a veteran. I, I mean, you might have hit on that at the very beginning, but. Yeah, Mike, Mike Taylor was a Green Beret. Uh, oh, he, he, he served in Lebanon. He served in some other places. He has had a very, very colorful um, background and history. Uh, he's, he's been in trouble with the law before. He did some time um, for, there, there's some like alleged bid, bid rigging. Um, he denies that that ever happened, that anything illegal was done. And they, they uh, <laughs> but they, they, they gave him like a plea deal, like, hey, plead guilty to this charge and we'll drop these other charges. So he did like a, a, um, some time in prison um, for that. Uh, He's been involved in other things, like like one of the other things that he's done over the years was uh, children who are kidnapped, where you have uh, family members, uh, uh, like where the mother is American, the father is, you know, Saudi Arabian or some other nationality, mm -hmm. and the parent will kidnap the child without parental consent from the other parent and just not without my daughter, country. not without right. that movie, right? Where th that's exactly the scenario. That's exactly the plot of not without my daughter. I think it was a a Sally Fields movie where she has to go to Saudi Arabia and save her kid. Stuff like that happens all the it does time. Happen. And, and, does and it happen? My, all the, does it happen enough that, that this is something people do? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, and um, you know, maybe one day we'll be able to talk to, you know, Mike is, has other things on his plate right now, but he was, he's been quite involved in cases like that. Yeah. And, so, and trying to get in and, and getting the kids back to the States. So when you're going through green beret school and, uh, you're going through your advanced courses. Is there a whole thing about, so this is a instrument case, drill holes in it so they can breathe like a dog. Um, this is how you smuggle people out. Is this, is this something you'll learn? Is this standard practice or is this something that Mike was thinking, I'm, I've saw it in a movie? No, it's not something that would be considered standard practice, although, you know, uh, there's some amount of uh, smuggling, so to speak, that takes place in, in unconventional warfare operations. But I, I think it's um, if if uh, Mr. Taylor uh, did do this, I think he was just thinking outside the box uh, and using his own ingenuity <laughs> more than anything. So what what's the deal with the person he's smuggling i mean um in the world of epstein's and uh jizz what was there any gazelle whatever her face is yeah uh, yeah yeah. you know we got a lot yeah maxwell we've got a lot of rich people trying to get out of wherever they're at really fast is this a situation that 
what is this guy wrapped up in that uh, Mike was trying to get him out of the country for? Yeah, so he's a uh, a Lebanese businessman uh, who was, you know, I, I think Forbes and some of the other uh, financial news people rated him as like one of the most important CEOs in Asia for quite a while. Um, he was the CEO of Nissan in Japan, and he was brokering um, some pretty big mergers with other car companies, trying to save Nissan, um, trying to bail out the company. And from what I understand, this upset, you know, some of the Japanese nationalist sensibilities that, you know, we're going to have, you know, our, our car company is going to be owned by the French now. Like, oh, how, how does that work? So that's the origins of the uh, legal troubles that Carlos got into and why he was out on bail and, and everything else. And um, arguably what he did, you know, murdering, bro brokering a merger is not illegal under Japanese law either. So there's a lot of like curious uh, turns in this case, to say the least. So what's next? Uh, you're talking to the guy, is, is he in the clink? Yeah, I talked to him yesterday. He's in uh, Norfolk Correctional Facility. Oh, he's right um, up the street. He's in there. He's telling me, he's like, man, we're in here with MS-13 guys, Latin Kings, and they're all violent, you know, violent people or people who are accused of violent crimes and like, <laughs> we're, we're in here with them. Um, but he, he's doing well, you know, he, he did, he, again, won't comment on the record because of uh, pending legal issues, but he's, he's holding up okay. And, he's and in, the next, he's in there with his kid. Yes, his son. Yeah. His son. So what is his son a former soft guy? Is he or is he just like wrapped up because dad got wrapped up in it? I, I do not know the full picture there. And I, I was hesitant to even ask uh, over the phone <laughs> being recorded by <laughs> the federal government. <laughs> maybe that's a conversation for another time, um, but it'll come out. Um, well, maybe it'll come out in these hearings. Um, but the, the, the next step is the hearing on the 28th. And uh, we'll have more information on what the future is for, for Peter and, and Mike Taylor after that. Well, uh, feel free to invite them on the show. They can come onto the back brief. We'll have a, a live Q&A. That'd be awesome. I'd love to talk with those guys. Sounds like they're- uh... after, after this is all over, they, they might be open to that. Oh, you never know. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, so folks, you know, I'm Rod Rodriguez. That's Jack Murphy. We are both with Connecting Vets. And I'll tell you something, Jack, one of the things that annoys me the most about my fellow veterans, my fellow brothers and sisters in arms, is that y'all don't care about veteran issues until it affects you. And then suddenly it's like, wow, did this happen? I got to write my congressman. This is bullshit. 99% of the things that you're upset about as a veteran are being reported by Connecting Vets. We have uh, Abby Bennett. We have Libby Howe. We've got Jack Murphy. We've got myself, although I'm not like doing some of the cool stories that they're doing. Uh, we've got uh, Phil Briggs. The whole team at Connecting Vets is actually covering the stories that matter to veterans. Uh, Jack, I mean, do you find yourself like kind of frustrated as, as much as I am with our veteran community when they're like, well, I didn't know this was happening to my benefits? Um, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, you don't care until you care. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't affect you until it affects you, so. Uh, I think there's a lot of things like that in the modern world, though, that people tur turn, turn a blind eye to until it kind of hits them in the pocketbook or wherever else, you know, hits them in the fields. So, Jack, where do you tell your veteran friends to go to get their latest news to find out what the hell's going on in the veteran world, man? Yeah, I mean, I think that the work we do at Connecting Vets is, you know, one of the best places or maybe the best place that you can go for news about veterans issues. Um, you know, I was even having a conversation with a friend of mine who's a Vietnam veteran the other day. And he's like, you know, I follow all of these news websites because he runs uh, a, a chapter for the Special Forces Association. And he's like, but you guys are the most professional. And I was like, wow, thank you, man. I like, appreciate that. But, you know, it's not just me either. It's, you know, some of the, uh, the, the ladies that work on the website. Uh, Big Phil is out there somewhere too. Uh, doing good work and I mean every day like kind of like head down just reporting the news day in day out you heard it here folks professional from a silent professional you like that see the tie-in that's what I do folks that's why they gave me the big bucks <laughs> uh, <laughs> folks go to connectingbets.com that's connectingbets.com we have podcasts we have radio show we have uh, news articles all day we're on Facebook we're on Twitter 
Uh, we're actually, you know, it's Corona. We're out here on the top of my house. We're doing smoke signals, just trying to get the word out <laughs> that there are veterans out there who, you know, there there's veteran issues happening every single day. We're right up the street from uh, Capitol Hill where your elected officials are doing their thing. You want to know what they're doing? Find out at ConnectingVets.com. Jack, take us into the next subject if you've got one. Yeah, so here's a here's a, a definite uh, change in pace here. Uh, the Army esports team has halted their streaming. Uh, the, it, we don't and we don't know if they're coming back or not right now. Um, so to rewind and just explain to maybe most of the people watching this online know, but esports is a very rapidly growing industry. It is where people live stream themselves playing video games onto online platforms. Uh, the biggest one is called Twitch. It, the industry made like, like $1.5 billion last year. It, so it's taken off. It's, it's becoming a thing, if you will, with America's youth. Uh, so the military seeing this, that this is where young people are going, this is where they're spending their entertainment time nowadays, the Army and the Navy have created esports teams. So we're talking about uniformed uh, service members who are playing video games competitively on, uh, on the internet. That's right. I um, met them actually. I was in San yeah. Antonio at a, it was like a gaming convention. Uh, mm -hmm. I was there with the, I was there with Stars and Stripes actually. And I sat down with the, I, I sat down to actually interview and chatted and, and played some games with the Army esports team. Uh, one of their guys, God, I can't remember his name. Beat the ever living dog crap out of me. Uh, I thought it was a good Street Fighter uh, Four player. I thought I was like, oh, I got some Street Fighter power, you know. I got some Street Fighter cred playing this for like twenty years. Dog shit, uh, just complete dog <laughs> shit. This guy schooled me like I was uh, like a child. At, at one point, he's actually playing the game, looking away while he's uh, talking to someone else, and I'm just getting my ass handed to me. But uh, yes, the, so yeah, the Army esports team they stopped streaming. You're not sure why. Well, we know why. Uh -oh. I, yeah, what happened was that the, uh, the, there were users jumping into the chat function asking them about war crimes. And so oh. it, like, like Eddie Gallagher was coming up. People are like, hey, can you get Eddie Gallagher on the stream talking about war crimes, you know, all this kind of stuff. So the, the Army and, uh, and apparently the Navy team also, they started blocking users. Like, hey, this, you know, and, and this constitutes, you know, cyberbullying or whatever. So they blocked them. And just like any other Twitch channel or Twitch user, the company, the, the platform Twitch hands you the ability to block or ban people or yeah. whatever, just like on, you know, Twitter or Facebook or whatever else. Now, the interesting thing is that um, there are legal experts who claim that this is a violation of the Constitution, that for a U.S. governmental entity, functioning in their official capacity to block and ban people is actually depriving them of their First Amendment rights. God damn. Now, there's an actual precedent to this now, because last year, it was the Second Circuit Court of Appeals in New York. They made a ruling about President Trump's Twitter account. And Trump was banning people that he didn't like, that, that he disagreed with, so he's blocking them. The court said, you can't do that because you are using this Twitter account in a, a official capacity as a US government official, the president in this case. So you cannot be just shutting down speech like that. And like, so can he turn off the comments? Can he, can he just, is turning off the comments bad? I, I, don't, I, I don't know the answer to that question, but I think that lawyers would challenge that if it happened. See, this because is why we can't have anything nice. This is why we can't have anything nice because lawyers always jump in and we're like, no, 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 no. You well, can't. I don't know. I, I, forgive my, my partisan bias. I'm not sure how nice our president's Twitter account is. I'm not yeah, sure but, if I'd use that word. But, but, but we set the precedent. So like now we can't have Army eSports because there are, let's face it, there are assholes out there. And just yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I understand that. And some of them live in our comment section on our on as Connecting yeah. Vets' Facebook page. Yeah. I see you guys out there. I know what you're writing. Um, it, it just seems like it, it's not fair for 
you know these guys not to be able to to block yes and the the interesting the interesting dichotomy there is that the platform twitch has these tools they give you yeah. to prevent online mm -hmm. harassment cyber bullying etc cetera, etc cetera. but what the law is apparently saying is that you know when you are on those platforms as an official u.s government entity you cannot use those tools um you cannot limit people's speech using those tools that's fascinating so, so uh, yeah you've had uh you know the the navy is continuing to, to stream games the army just recently um because of this very issue and the criticism they've received they have halted all streams so they are no longer active and there's no telling when they're coming back no one seems to know now i saw some some when i was scr uh, scrolling through facebook again i don't know if this is true or not maybe you've heard of it but members of congress i think it was aoc actually was trying to promote the idea that uh we should not allow the dod or federal entities to use platforms like twitch like esports to recruit or did you do stuff like have you heard anything about that yes sir uh that is accurate uh representative acacio cortez from my beloved state of new york aoc uh, baby oh my god <laughs> Yeah, part my, my again my my own bias uh, threatens to come out here. I I, I think that th I think that she's kind of uh, ridiculous, particularly particularly on this issue. Uh, she's trying to put a amendment into a House Appropriations Bill that's being debated right now that would say that the the um, the funding that Congress is authorizing the U.S. military that they cannot use that funding to, and I quote. It will uh, prohibit the use of funds for recruiting via video gaming and esports platforms. So, yes, yeah, she is trying to do that. She is trying to prevent DOD from engaging in esports or being on these streaming platforms at all. So, I think this is a great idea. Uh, I think recruiters should be forced to go back to the old school way of standing outside of your recruitment station. Uh, handing out flyers. Hey, young man, do you want to join the army? Want to go overseas and make some college money? Uh, <laughs> why not? Uh, you know, let's go back to the old Captain America days. It's a it's a generational issue because you know in the old days, you know, even people who are older than than I am, that's the way they would want to be recruited. Like they want to talk to the person. Like they want to go and talk to the guy. Like you know, in my case, you know, I was a ranger. They want to go and talk to a ranger and and hear what they have to say today kids are looking at stuff on their phone all day oh, yeah. and so and, you know the kids today they want they want to get information from their phone so did you, you know did you just did you really just the kids today the kids today man the, the these uh how these old teenagers. are you jesus <laughs> i turned 37 man I, i'm i'm boomer i got like a ras al ghul beard going on here i'm practically <laughs> ancient but you're 37 um, in human years, but that makes you 65, 80 in army <laughs> years. And grumpy years, yeah. And grumpy uh, years, yeah. But, uh, but I mean, it is what it is, right? The, the younger kids, they want to, they are, uh, they are on Twitch, they are on TikTok, all these sorts of things. So, of course, it makes sense for the army to want to go there as a, as a place to potentially recruit young people or make them aware of, you know, the opportunities that the military can offer. You know, it's funny when I was uh, visiting with this, uh, the esports team, uh, I was watching them play Call of Duty, I think it was, and they were all just, you know, really into it. They got the big old headsets and all that. And I see one of these guys takes his headset off, pulls a green beret, puts it on, and then puts his headset on. And I'm like, this is do for real? And I, I walked up and said, hey, man, you're a green beret? You special forces dude? And he's like, yeah, I'm part of the esports team. He's an E7. I can't, you know, all their names are escaping me right now. But yeah, yeah, uh, no, was, you're, you're right. Yeah, there's an SF guy. Yeah. I think there's a ranger battalion guy there too. If there is, I didn't see him. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was really cool that they were doing that level of outreach. Now, okay, I, I don't want, I'm not getting into the politics of it, but I will say this. Uh, I think on a personal level, it's a great idea because to your point, you want to meet the people doing the type of work that you're going to be doing. And if you want to meet a ranger, you're going to go find a ranger. A lot of the public doesn't know where to find a Green Beret. I mean, if you want to find a Navy SEAL, you can find them on Facebook. 
probably doing a leadership course of something sort. But if you're looking for a Green Beret, you can't find that dude. You want to find a Ranger? Kind of hard to find that dude. This type of thing allowed them to travel around the country. Uh, hey, come meet a Ranger. Hey, come meet a Special Forces guy. And then their, their team was made of all these different MOSs. And that's, that's a thing, uh, and I'll let you folks know. If you think that's an actual job in the Army, it's not. Uh, playing video games is an additional duty. You get temporarily assigned to it like you would recruiting or you would like anything else. Um, you do your time and then back to the regular army with you. Uh, so, you know, it was really cool because some of these people, it was their first inter, and I went down this line. So there was a line going out the back, uh, the back way. Oh, that's my fault. Uh, there was a line going out the back way that was exclusively to meet this team. And I thought it was really neat because, you know, I'm going down talking to these folks. And I'm like, have you ever met a soldier before? Like, no, this is the first time I've met an army dude. Oh, wow. Did you know? And I'm pointing you out. I'm like, did you know that guy was a Green Beret? That's, that dude's a real Green Beret, like a real one. I'm like, yeah. Oh, dude, you know, my kid's talking about, you know, becoming a, a special forces guy someday because he plays the games. I'm like, go meet him. Go talk to him. That's crazy. I, I mean, I remember uh, being on the subway system in New York City in, man, this was like 2012, maybe. And uh, there are advertisements for this video game um, all over the subway system saying, are you ready for tier one? And it was just so weird that these are like terms that like we would use, you know, in, in you know, in the team room or deployed overseas, you know, ba back in 2007 or eight or nine or whatever. Um, and now it's on ads like billboards all over the subway system, in New York City. And I, I get on the train, I, I hear these kids like, 13, 14 year old kids talking about like the M16 versus the AK-47. And I'm like, what the, what the hell does a kid in New York City know about these firearms? Like it's, it's not their culture. They don't have them there. It's illegal to have them. And then I realized it's from the video games. Yep. I remember um, my kid several years ago, uh, he's playing one of these games and uh, I'm out like kind of zoning out, doing something completely different. And all of a sudden, I hear one of these characters refer to a colored tear. And <laughs> my, my ears perk up. I'm like, what? Because at the time, you know, like, that's something you, you kind of kept to yourself. Uh, and I mean, listening to him talk about colored tears and SMUs. And I'm like, what, what's going on here? What, what's happened? This is like real real lingo yeah, yeah. Uh, at, at one point they were one guy was talking about yeah we got to do a s uh, uh an svr and i was like are we being are we talking about the same thing what the hell's going on here uh so yeah i mean the it, it's it's a different it's, environment, different man. environment. Like when, when i first started doing this kind of stuff i got out of the military started be becoming the you know online special ops guy and writing news articles and stuff like that when I first started in yeah about 2012, the only other Green Beret of my generation out there was Tim Kennedy. There were no Rangers from the GWAT era. Um, now here we are, 2020. It's just completely different. Um, you have JSOC guys posting pictures of their deployments on Instagram. Uh, it's just completely different, completely different. That's right, folks. JSOC, uh, we got Navy SEALs coming out there writing books we got green berets uh my favorite thing in, in, in when it comes to the special operations community is a lot of and, and maybe this is a recent trend tell me if i'm wrong but if you served a day in ranger battalion or if you uh no matter what you did as long as you had some special operations experience you're coming out and now you're a leadership consultant congratulations yeah. um yeah that's my personal favorite it's such a scam it kind uh, of is right it, 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 no, it absolutely is. And any of these corporations who think like they're going to run their business like Green Berets or Navy SEALs, like, no, you're not, dude. Like, just stop. Just stop right there. That, that's, that's not how it works. And, and it, it's also very strange how the military is constantly like, they're like looking towards corporations to like figure out how to do things. 
You remember all that <laughs> stuff with like McChrystal, like we created the team of teams and we brought everyone into a round table. It's like, that's what like IBM was doing in 1984. Like that's how far behind the military is. But then these guys get out of the military and now they're like selling their expertise back to these corporations, like as if the military has some special life hack or secret sauce when it comes to organizational leadership. I mean, the military is like operating in a World War II framework. It's ridiculous. I still insist that if, I, if you want to get hired at Best Buy, you need a hell week. You need a qualify yeah. to sell them TVs in the back. My God, come on, people, wake up. Wake yeah, up, sheeple. I, I, have a whole, I have a whole separate rant on, on all this. This is probably another a, a totally different episode, <laughs> though. Well, you know what? I, I'm, I'm big on that because, you know, as a veteran entrepreneur myself, I have to consider, so it just seems like if you're a veteran, you're going to get out, you want to start a business, you're going to start a t-shirt business, a coffee business, or a leadership consulting. Um, very few people, I think, are qualified to do leadership consulting, uh, but it, it's, it's a market that's so subjective. You know, maybe you need a Tim Kennedy, or maybe you need a Jack Murphy in your consult, in your, in your boardroom to tell you that you suck. Maybe that's what you need. Maybe you need to hear it from somebody that you respect and go, oh, well, you think we suck. Maybe we should change things around. I don't know. But I just um, think that stuff is just so hokey with these guys coming out there. Like, Stop making excuses. And it's like, bro, our budget is $1,500 and you want us <laughs> to do something that costs $2 million. But Stop telling me not to make excuses, buddy. You know, that's not, that's not how real life works. Sorry. I, I love the Jocko Wilnicks of the world. Um, and it's not, it's not having to get it against Jocko. Jocko's amazing. He's doing great work out there and he's a jujitsu fiend and, you know, love the guy to death. But it's so interesting how all these other carbon copies came out, you know, and it yeah, doesn't yeah. matter if you're a Green Beret or, or a Navy SEAL. I mean, you could still be ripping someone off. Yeah, it's, it's just that, yeah, it's the market dynamics. Like everyone sees one person having some success doing it and they all want to jump in there and kind of do the same thing. On the, and, on the other hand, on the other hand, hear me out. If you're a CEO and you need to get out of the country fast uh, because you are <laughs> hey. involved in something, <laughs> you need that green braid to shove you into an instrument case and know how to do it. Um, mindset. 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 <laughs> Jack, thank you so much for being on uh, the show, man. You're always a pleasure to have. Uh, plug your pluggables. Where can we find you? Sure, man. Uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at uh, Jack Murphy RGR. Um, I do a uh, weekly uh, live stream podcast deal called The Team House. You can find us on YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, wherever wherever you find that kind of stuff, um, where we interview special operations veterans and. Uh, you know, people from the intelligence community. No, le no leadership seminars, though. Sorry. Unfortunately, that comes later, folks. See, that's an extra twenty nine ninety five. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'll be honest with you guys. A month, uh, a month for sure. Of course, it's got to be a membership thing. Um, I'm a huge fan of what Jack's doing, folks. You should see some of the guests that come on the show. He's under, he's underselling it when he says uh, special operations veterans. Uh, <laughs> the guy had on like. Uh, weapons inspectors from the UN. He's got guys that were in Delta. He's got guys that were out there doing the damn thing. And the funny part to me is how every day this shit is for some of these guys. Like yeah, Jack's yeah. talking to folks and they're like, so yeah, we, you know, uh, we came into the cover of night. Uh, Halo dropped into this uh, terrible place. Uh, beat the shit out of some dudes. Uh, oh God. Did, yeah, we, we got, we came under fire. Grabbed our grabbed our guy and we were you know we were out of the country within forty eight hours. You hear the, the last the last episode we did was with a guy who flew for Air America, and uh, afterwards he Air America was a CIA cover organization, uh, and and then afterwards after he finished that he started running drugs for the Colombian cartels. And, as you uh, should, as listen, you should. Yeah. <laughs> you hear some of his stories and very matter, matter of factly tell you, he told, told us like this story about how some uh, smugglers from Texas broke down on this like remote Colombian airstrip. And he was like, Hey, get in the plane. I'll fly you home. They're like, no, no, the Colombians will get us out. Colombians took those dudes out into the wood line and fucking shot them. If they're lucky, if that's all they did. Yeah. I mean, it's just crazy stuff, but oh. yeah, I mean, these, these guys live the life. So, I mean, it, it all comes across very, yeah. Matter of fact, very, I, I love talking to narco people because the stories they will tell you 
in that matter of fact voice to like and so they you know we just put their families in these plastic bags and then you know like what what whoa whoa where is the story going this is my kid's fifth birthday party you can't this isn't for other people what are you doing Talk, talking yeah, to dea guys it's a lot of fun too 100 percent team house the team house talk the team house yeah team house go 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 check out the team house podcast folks it's dope you're gonna love it and uh, make sure you check them out on Connecting Vets. And Jack, well, before we wrap it up here, I'm thinking about doing some online gaming for Connecting Vets. You and I talked about this. What do you think? Uh, my concept is chilling out, chill out video games where I'm just going to play for an hour. I got a whole bunch of games that are just super chill, nice ambient music. Or should I be doing Call of Duty fighting 14-year-olds being called a piece of shit? Yeah, I, again, I might be a little bit too old. I might be out of the demographic. I mean, w the, once in a while when I do play video games, I play like uh, uh, like Skyrim. So maybe I would be the more of the, the ambient, chill out guy. <laughs> See, may, maybe there's a market for this, man. I'm I'm into it. I've got a couple of games here that I would love to just hang out and let you know, let some vets chill out. Maybe like a Wednesday show, get over the hump of the week um folks if that's something you're interested in let me know if you if you're, you're not to, you know don't burst my bubble too hard whatever <laughs> connectingvets.com that's where you can check out everything from jack murphy myself the whole connecting vets team we also have another podcast called vet story it's basically stories from veterans in their own words i promise there is no other podcast right now that does what we're doing with vet story it's a completely different feel different sound 100 percent. you're gonna love it Vet Story available wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. I'm Rod Rodriguez. That was Jack Murphy. Jack, say goodbye. Thanks, everyone. Take care. All right. That's it for us. We are out of here.